For more on this issue, let's take a look at this first report. Water pollution or water contamination is the impurity of lakes, rivers, groundwater, oceans or any water body. Such impurity is a result of the presence of huge amounts of harmful compounds, example, feces in these water bodies without being adequately treated. Water pollution's effect is destructive on water ecology, plants, organisms and humans. In almost all cases, species living in contaminated water are likely to die, and the natural biological communities located in water bodies are also expected to be destroyed. Nowadays, water contamination is one of the most global, political, social and economic concerns that require systematic evaluations and study in order to come up with international water resource policies, starting from the individual level through raising public awareness. According to the second UN World Water Development Report, more than a billion people who constitute one-fifth of the world population lack access to safe water and to basic sanitation as well. One of the leading environmental world scientists, Gary White, stated that water contamination is the number one cause of death and diseases, encountering in this sense more than 14,000 daily deaths. Wang Jinan, a Chinese environmental researcher, said to the New York Times that more than 500 million Chinese lack access to safe drinking water in China's cities and that around 90% of local cities suffer from some degree of water contamination. Moreover, The Economist magazine estimated that India encounters nearly 700 million people with no access to proper toilet and that diarrheal sickness is the cause of 1,000 Indian children's death every day. How can we save our water ecology? How much is the water pollution dire on the global level? And how can we protect our local drinking water? So today we have with us in the studio Ms. Malak Terkawi, an environmentalist. R first of all, thanks for being here with us today. Thank you. So can you start by defining for us uh, water pollution? Well, bo water pollution is any physical, chemical or biological change in the water quality that would affect the, uh, the living things that, uh, that use this water, live in it or drink from it. Mm -hmm. And so water pollution, water contamination, are, you would say are pretty much the same thing? Yeah, water, water pollution is uh, when you add pollutants into the water, mm -hmm. but when the water it becomes contaminated, it's the amount of pathogenic microorganisms that are found in this water, mm -hmm. or the, the sediments also, or the, or the organics and the inorganics that are found in this water. Mm -hmm. So is water contamination the same around the world? Does it vary from country to country? Does, for example, humidity or temperature play a role? Well, of course, it varies from a country to a country. It depends on the uh, sources of contamination uh, that are found in, uh, in a certain country. They might be different from one country to another. Mm -hmm. um, it depends, for example, industrialized countries would have um, a high number, high, uh, number of uh, industrial waste while other countries might, um, might still use the septic tanks uh, for, and therefore sewage would be uh, d discharged into the water and would affect the water quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, as for temperature and temperature and the humidity, of course, they affect the water quality, whereas the temperature increases, the water gets warmer, therefore there will be less dissolved oxygen in the water. When there is less dissolved oxygen in the water, the beneficial microorganisms that are found in the water would not be able to decompose the, uh, the pathogenic microorganisms that are found in the water. Therefore, the water contamination would be, um, uh, would increase. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some examples of this? Like, say you compare, for example, uh, water contamination in the United States to, say, the Middle East. Of course, in the Middle East, it is... Uh, it is higher mm -hmm. um, simply because in the United States there is the um, there is the Water Act and there is the EPA that works on the uh, that sets um, that sets mitigation measures and um, and uh, implements um, implements action plans that mm -hmm. uh, that are uh, beneficial and they they spread awareness all over the or over the states. However, in the Middle East, where we are developing countries, uh, industries are. Uh, are um, are found more here than in developed countries, 
and uh, we still have a minimal awareness about the issue and we, not, we do not know about the severity of the issue. So, uh, of course, in developing countries, uh, the, the, level of, uh, the level of water contamination is much higher. Mm -hmm. How do you think we can deal with this? Like you said, for example, in the United States or Western or more developed countries, they have certain acts, they have uh, laws, they have regulations, they have action plans. Yeah. How do you think we can change this in, for example, the Middle East or if you talk about Africa? or different yeah. other areas First, of the world? First, awareness should take place. We're um, beginning at the households. We have uh, um, people should know how important the, ca the, the issue is, how important water con uh, contamination is, how it affects their health. They have to know that uh, the drinking water that uh, they have to drink, it should be safe. Mm -hmm. Therefore, awareness should be spread by, uh, by environmentalists into the households in order to uh, to let them be more aware about the um, about the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, moreover, um, they they also should uh, they also should, uh <laughs> work more on this issue of awareness and uh, yeah. Maybe um, the um, also the governmental uh, governmental sectors mm -hmm. should uh, should take. Um, should take should play a, a should big play role. a big role in that, mm -hmm. and this mainly is not only through uh, putting regulations; it's by implementing them, mm -hmm. by um, by stopping or preventing the people from contaminating the water bodies. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's say we look at areas where there is a higher level of contamination, a very high level of contamination. Yeah. How can people uh, realize or? For example, tell the difference between water that is contaminated and water that is safe to drink. Are there certain ways that they can go about finding this out, especially in areas where the regulations are not so clear? Of course, there are ways. First, we have to test the water that is uh, that is that is reaching the houses of the um, of the of the peop of the uh, of the households. Mm -hmm. We have to uh, we have to check the sewer lines if uh, if leakages are not uh, are not taking place from the sewer and mixing with the with the potable water reaching the uh, that the taps in their households. We have to check the drinking water from where do they get their water from wells from springs, mm -hmm. and uh, and how safe this water is. And we have um, to know the um, um, the sicknesses, the waterborne illnesses that that the, the people in that area suffer from. Mm -hmm. So, who would be doing this testing? You would say, for example, the government or certain organizations that are in charge of doing this testing. Yeah, there are certain organizations that uh, that should act in case the governments are not mm -hmm. uh, present. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you. Uh, we'll be going to our guest who is joining us by phone today, who is Mr. George De Souza, the owner of the EcoForum.org website. First of all, thanks for being here with us today. Mr. D'Souza, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. Uh, so if we relate water pollution to the ecological system, how would you say contaminated, contaminated water can affect food? Well, uh, I would say it can, um, the most obvious way is that with contaminated water, you're going to have poisoned food. Mm -hmm. Just to give you an example, years ago, um, I would say a couple of years ago in Italy, which is the country where I'm originally from, um, there was the picture of a lemon near a, a play, where an illegal landfill, which was totally deformed. Okay, so just to give you an idea, would any consumer buy anything like that? Okay, and uh, for a farmer to to toil one, let's say one year, and produce something like that, which it cannot be sold. I mean, it's going to be a huge loss. So hopefully, this will give you an idea on, on how contaminated water can affect uh, food. So would you say that uh, contaminated water affects farmers' productivity, for example? And uh, yes, how does it course. do so? As I said before, if, um, I would say the, the second question comes is a direct consequence of the first. If, uh, because of water contaminated, you produce other food which is outright the form, which cannot be sold, or food which, let's say, from, in, from in outside looks normal. But when, when you go for the testing, when it tests positive to lots of... Uh, substances which are hazardous to health and the, and the food cannot be sold. Also in that case, yes, the one is going to be a, a loss for the farmer, which uh, basically has been working uh, for one year in vain. And then in that case, the farmer will be reliant on charities, charity handouts, in order to, <laughs> to make a living. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yes, in a certain way, I mean, I would say it's quite obvious that contaminated water will affect uh, 
farmers' productivity, apart uh, in addition to, to food. Mm -hmm. So let's say we move to, for example, industrial companies. What would you say is the role played by these industrial companies? And what is the legal situation of, for example, your country? Would you say that there are sanctions posed on business uh, firms that contribute to water pollution? Uh, well, <laughs> I believe, I mean, it's quite obvious from what you read on the news that industrial companies, in one way or another, play a huge role in, um, in uh, contaminating water. Mm -hmm. Because, um, as, you, as you might know, water is needed for lots of things. It's, need, it's needed not only for drinking, for irrigation, but also for industrial processes. And, um, I mean, you might have heard of, of the case in China, where rivers, which once were pristine, uh, that uh, I was seeing lots, lots of, uh, um, uh, I would say, poisonous substances from industrial companies, and uh, uh, which now basically uh, the, the water in those rivers is undrinkable and, and cannot be used for, um, uh, for irrigation. And uh, of course, those uh, big industrial companies, which have got thousands of factories along Chinese rivers, uh, I mean, Chinese rivers or rivers in many other countries, basically they're playing a huge role in, uh, in this kind of environmental devastation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, regarding the company, regarding the, like you said, the legal situation. As I say, I'm originally from Italy, but I've been living in, in England for a long time. Now, in, in both countries, basically, the polluting water is uh, an offense, which uh, can lead to unlimited fines and imprisonment. But I believe in Britain, the law usually is more strictly enforced. Because in Italy, usually, those people who um, take part in water contamination, they're part of big uh, organized crime syndicates. And uh, for them, you know, getting few years in jail, I mean, is nothing compared to the fact that usually those people have got to serve uh, lots of life sentences. So um, uh, basically, <laughs> I would say in Italy it is a huge problem because of, of this, this uh, presence of those organized crime syndicates, which, uh, thanks God, we don't have here in the, in the UK. Mm -hmm. but, um, but still in the UK, another thing, uh, now uh, there's going to be fracking, okay? And, this, and with this fracking, those fracking permits, uh, which have been, um, I would say, some of them have been handed out in a way which, um, I would say, in a very strange way, okay? <laughs> so, and, and in the experience so far in America shows that those um, fracking processes can, con uh, can play a huge role in, co in contaminate, contaminating water, possibly forever. Possibly, once the water is contaminated by fracking, it's going to be very, very hard, if not impossible, to return it to a drinkable uh, state. Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I don't know if I made myself clear. Thank you very much, Mr. D'Souza. We'll be off for a short break, but please stay tuned because we'll be right back. That place we tackle case by case. Cases where we believe that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Welcome back. So before we continue our discussion, let's take a look at the second report. One of the foundations of prosperous communities nowadays is the availability to access clean drinking water. This report illustrates facts about the shortage of this essential resource. In the World Water Day in 2013, 
Greenpeace organization highlighted the devastative situation for people around the world, and in particular people in China, which represents the largest country in the world today with a population of more than 1.3 billion. In its report, Greenpeace stated, Our oceans contain the vast majority of our water, with just 2.5% of the planet's total supply being fresh water. 320 million people in China deprive access to clean drinking water. Pollution in China infects 40% of China's surface water. 20% of the groundwater used as drinking water in China's urban areas is polluted, sometimes with carcinogenic hazardous chemicals. The majority of clothing items from big fashion brands like Gap, Vero Moda and Calvin Klein that Greenpeace tested contained hazardous chemicals. Some of these chemicals break down to form hormone-disrupting and even cancer-causing chemicals when released into waterways around the world. In this regard, it is reported that every year around 80 billion garments are produced worldwide, the equivalent of just over 11 garments a year for every person on the planet. It is estimated that each individual, man, woman and even the unborn child, carries hundreds of man-made chemicals in their bodies, including some that could be linked to the textile industry, according to the NGO. Greenpeace and many other international NGOs demand fashion brands to detox their products and supply chains by transparently eliminating all hazardous chemicals from their manufacturing processes by 2020. In response to that, brands like Zara, Victoria's Secret, Benetton and Valentino have agreed to detox their products and production processes by 2020. Welcome back. So as we were saying, Mr. D'Souza, we were talking about uh, people from, for example, undeveloped countries. You'd say that they are more subjected than people of developed countries to bear water contamination's effect. What would you say your stance is your stance on this? Well, because what happens is developed countries have got much more stringent regulation on uh, water contamination. Mm -hmm. And um, also, um, I would say, for instance, just to give you an idea, I don't know if you have heard of the Erin Brockovich case. Remember that legal clerk uh, who brought a lawsuit to a um, large uh, U.S. multinational that, um, uh, that has contaminated water in California. So, and, and the company had to pay a lot of money. So, I mean, as, as you can understand, usually um, there's much more protection in uh, developed countries. So that, that what happened is those companies want to cut corners, want to produce at low cost, they, they will emigrate to countries where, um, I would say, to, uh, to developing countries who need to employ their own uh, people. So uh, they will attract investment. They will try all their best to attract investment, uh, which means uh, that they will, uh, they will allow those big companies to cut corners, which means to pollute as those companies please. And, uh, and what happens is, usually, the profits uh, made by those companies uh, go back to their own countries or go to some fiscal paradises. Why? The environmental costs, the huge environmental costs, are borne, uh, either are borne by, by the taxpayers in those de uh, developing countries or simply uh, um, clean, clean, clean up after those multinationals um, is something that those countries cannot afford because the costs usually are quite prohibitive. Uh, which means that, uh, <laughs> uh, which means that uh, basically, those uh, developing countries have got to learn. Uh, sometimes they're forced to live with those uh, contaminated waters. Mm -hmm. So, what are the most dangerous chemicals that contaminate our water? If we want to talk about the chemicals instead of the underdeveloped, mm. more developed countries. The, okay, uh, there are thousands of uh, chemical substances in this world. And apparently, from what I heard, each year, new uh, thousands of new chemicals are created. But uh, I would say, return to the case of Ian Brockovich, in that case, the contamination was from chromium. Yes, chromium is a notorious uh, pollutant. It's an extremely dangerous substance, which can, can cause uh, cancer and lots, lots of other complaints. But, um, I mean, on top of chromium, there are thousands and I would say tens of thousands of uh, chemicals which are just as dangerous, if not more dangerous. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you very much, Mr. D'Souza. We'll be back to our guests in the studio, Mr. Kawi. Yes. So if we continue about this issue of uh, access to clean water, how easy would you say is access to clean water today? Access to clean water isn't that easy today, um, simply because um, um, clean, uh, clean water, uh, simply because the number of human beings is, uh, is on a rise um, over the world and its activities are increasing. So therefore, um, more wastes are being disposed into the water bodies, more, more sewage is being discharged without knowing the severity of the, uh, without being aware of, about the severity of the problem mm -hmm. and without taking actions in order to stop the, the, uh, the, p the pollution that is taking place. Mm -hmm. So how do human beings contribute to polluting this water? Human beings are, first of all, water pollution cannot, take pl uh, cannot be present if human beings are, do not occur. Mm -hmm. Human beings are the main reason behind finding water pollution in our um, water bodies. So uh, through the various activities that human beings do through, their, uh, through uh, disposing unwanted material, through, uh, through discharging oils into the water bodies, through, uh, through disposing plastics into the water bodies that is considered dangerous, mm -hmm. and um, through the agricultural runoff, uh, by using through by using the uh, fertilizers and pesticides through the uh, the industrial wastes that are being disposed um, into the water bodies with, without knowing how dangerous the quality of this effluent from the industries um, is that into the water bodies. and what sort of action plan do you think we as a globe need to follow in terms uh, in terms of this this huge issue uh, the, the action plan that we need to follow it um, it has to come from uh, um, it has to be applied by, uh, um, there are various action plans actually that should be followed mm -hmm. at, the, at the human level, at the uh, governmental, at the level, governmental level, yeah. So there are different action plans that could be, uh, that should be taken where at the um, human level we have to uh, be more aware about the severity of the issue first of all and be convinced about the, about the issue because if we're not convinced we won't be able to take action. Um, we have to um, prevent ourselves from disposing the wastes into the water bodies. Mm -hmm. We have um, um, to find cost-effective um, ways in, um, to treat, our, to treat the, the sewage water that is uh, discharged without being treated or, or uh, minimally treated into mm -hmm. the water bodies. But say our governments aren't doing much to, to tackle this issue. How do you think we can make them uh, push or lobby for this to change? Do you think there is a way for us to convince, say, different organizations or to make our governments move towards uh, facing this issue more adequately, or do you think it's just out of our hands? Of course, we, c we can force the, uh, the governments uh, by, uh, by showing how, how many people are getting, uh, are getting, um, uh, are getting diseases from the, from the water that they are consuming. Uh, um, the main problem is the lack of data. When we have data about uh, the waterborne illnesses that we, that, we are, um, that we are having throughout the world, because of, uh, of the water, of the contaminated water, we'd be able to, to find the adequate solutions and we'd be able to force the governments in order to set regulations uh, concerning, uh, concerning the issue. Mm -hmm. So as a kind of final question to wrap everything up, what do you say are your expectations for the future? Do you think clean water will be available sometime in the near future universally for everyone? No, of course it, would, it, won't, be, uh, it won't be available if we, if we, can't, uh, if we can't limit the, uh, the, uh, mm -hmm. the, the contaminants that are being disposed into the water. Water is not an infinite resource. We have to uh, take care of the fresh bodies that are, that are, still pr that are present. Mm -hmm. Treatments of water, there are um, so many feasible ways of treating water that could be done. They could be done at the household level. So um, awareness should be spread in order to treat this water, in order to save it for our children, for the coming generations. Mm -hmm. and, um, in order to prevent more and more contamination of the water where we would lack this um, uh, precious resource. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Kawi. We will be asking the same question to our guest by phone, uh, Mr. D'Souza. Would you say, what, what would you say are your, your expectations for the future? Do you think that there will be clean water available universally to everyone, or do you think that this is an issue that will take a lot more time and that maybe we won't be able to solve? <laughs> well, this is going to be a very difficult issue because what happens is, uh, with the population ever increasing, with, um, I would, with, with the needs of, of the population um, also increasing. <laughs> I don't know. Because, look, the more population, 
the more um, we, agricultural output we need, which means the more irrigation we need. Uh, we've just given the crop irrigation, for instance, accounts for 65% of the world water use. Okay? And um, uh, uh, there's one thing. Uh, also, to give you some, some other figure, yeah? Just imagine, uh, it's been calculated that um, from, I mean, you, when you go to the butcher and, and you buy beef, yeah? For each kilogram of beef, um, we need, let's say, 14,000 liters of water, okay? And if you're in another figure, apparently, the, every day the average uh, British person consumes 150 liters of water, okay? So those figures show that water, fresh water usage is going to increase um, um, as the population also increases, also as the population, the population's needs mm -hmm. increase. And... Uh, Getting, um, I would say, the, the sources of, um, I would say, the percentage of uh, fresh water, the salt water, is, uh, let's say, 2.5 to uh, 97.5, which means only 2.5% of the water in, um, in this world is fresh water. So it will be increasingly uh, difficult to make sure that this uh, clean water is available to everyone. The only way to, 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 get, um, to make, let's say, fresh water available to everyone is a massive program of desalination, okay, desalinating ocean water, which is not always feasible because this process requires huge, huge amounts of energy. Because, for instance, in London, they want to do that, and, and the mayor of London at that time, Ken Livingston, say no, because he say this one requires too much energy. Uh, we, we will not manage to do it. So... <laughs> Um, Thanks to Ms. Malaki Turkawi joining us in the studio and to Mr. George D'Souza, who is the owner of the ecoforum.org website, joining us by I phone like from London. This is Ecoterrorism and I'm Zainab Beloun. See you next week.
wherever those are persecuted, that place we tackle case by case. Cases, where we believe that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. Al Etijak News Channel. The truth fears no questions.